Well, we have arrived at tonight's keynote speech presented by Karen Webb, the Commissioner of the New South Wales Police Force. Commissioner Webb was formally appointed as the 23rd Commissioner of the New South Wales Police Force in February 2022, becoming the first woman to hold the position in the history of the state. Since joining the New South Wales Police Force in May 1987, Commissioner Webb has performed general duties and criminal investigations both in Sydney and regional New South Wales. As Commissioner, she has introduced the Pulse Program, which is the single most significant investment into the mental and physical well-being of all officers. And this includes mental health cl clinicians embedded in police stations across New South Wales. She was uh, raised in the regional town of Brewer and is the proud working parent of two boys. Please welcome Commissioner Webb. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the invitation to be here, Cousin Amit and Affinity, for the great uh, opportunity to be with you tonight. So thank you very, very much. I would welcome and again acknowledge all our very special guests, but I'm not quite sure that I'd capture everyone. It was quite a long list, so I'd just like to re reiterate um, an acknowledgement to all the very special guests here tonight, but particularly my colleagues in emergency services and defence. Good evening to both, to both tables tonight. Um, and also the Honourable Penny Sharp and um, other members of Parliament. So thank you for being here. We, when I was asked to speak, I thought, I'm not quite sure. And looking around this room, I've got people from all parts of probably Australia and I thought what, what do people really want to know about New South Wales Police and from New South Wales Police Commissioner. So I'll give you a bit of context. So New South Wales Police Force as a force has 22,000 employees made up of 18,000 sworn police officers and 4,000 support staff right across New South Wales operating out of 476 police premises from a, in a range of duty types. But the police officers are merely members of the community that wear a blue shirt. They are drawn from all walks of life and are truly representative of the community that they work and live. Part of uh, what I hope to achieve in my term as commissioner in the five years uh, term is to increase those diversity metrics. We have about 28% female officers 35% female employees across the board and a very various other percentage is of diversity in our workforce. So I look forward to the challenges um, of recruiting and retaining talented individuals. I'm probably going to be competing with my colleagues in defence and other emergency services. It's a very rich talent pool that we're all competing uh, for the same type of people. Um, and I know they're aggressively recruiting, so let's see how we go. <laughs> Um, when I was sworn in, so as has been mentioned by our MC, Darren, that I've been in the police almost 36 years, and I have to say it quickly because it doesn't feel like 36 years, in fact, uh, it's gone rather quickly because I've had a very rich and diverse career in this organisation. But when I was po appointed Commissioner in February last year, it was a great honour and a privilege uh, to be selected to be the commissioner, and it just so happens that I'm a female and the first female commissioner in this, this state, the testament for me will be that I won't be the last female commissioner. So I hope I am alive and I hope it's not too far in the future that I actually see the next female commissioner. We exist to keep New South Wales safe. How we do that, and my five priorities as a commissioner, I have been to set out five things, four of them outward facing, and one is about the workforce. One is connected community, and that's number one priority. We only exist at the will of the community. We police because the commu as the community wishes to uh, us to police and according to the laws in New South Wales. Our connection to the community is a partnership. And that goes from my level in the organisation and whether that's me meeting people like you as a connection or to the junior constables in those towns and cities and suburbs across New South Wales. 
that connection means the core of policing. We cannot do our work without partnership with the community. We rely on our community, we rely on that partnership. I've often said the, the community are our eyes and ears, but it's more than that. There's, there was a former Deputy Commissioner, who, uh, Deputy Commissioner Nick Caldas, who once said, the time to draw on those networks of community is not the time of crisis. Those, those partnerships and networks networks are established well in advance of those crisis times. And I think if you look, and there are many examples, but more recent examples include the COVID pandemic, where police had to take on a particular role, not one that we all enjoyed, but we had a role to play in the support of the government uh, mandate, etc. But we required and we worked very closely with, you, with all the communities in New South Wales to make sure that those houses, those people, in those um, houses and those communities got the resources that they need. Police officers and defence were going door to door delivering hampers to make sure that those families in, in communities um, right across Sydney particularly, but across New South Wales nece where necessary, had what they needed. So whilst it appeared very front centre that police were arresting people for not wearing a face mask, there's a story at the back of that about the work in partnership. And I know some of my cousins at my table and others in this room understand the work that was done in partnership. And it's critical that we continue those partnerships. Certainly, um, history tells us that we see a pandemic one in every 100 years. So I'm hoping that the next thing that comes across our um, desk is not a, another pandemic, but as we know with fires, floods, floods, pandemic and more floods, you never know when the next time is that we've got to come together to service those more vulnerable or just everyone in our community. So connected community remains key to, to our success. The second priority and one that is often uh, difficult to talk about, and I call it the silent crimes, it's domestic violence, it's sexual abuse, child abuse, and cybercrime. And we call it si silent crime because of the effect it has on victims. Often it happens behind closed doors and those victims often find it difficult to find a voice. And that is another area of partnership is key, where we need to work with community le le leaders to help our um, victims, witnesses, families come forward for assistance and work with us to, to reduce the incidence of domestic violence in particular. The third priority and something that I'm sure challenges many, many communities, it's not a city problem and it's not a regional New South Wales problem and that is youth violence particularly and our indigenous communities. And I apologise um, Professor uh, Michael McDaniel, for your welcome to country. It was lovely, and I too grew up on Wiradjuri land, so thank you very much for that. Close to the Lachlan River, I spent many of my young years on the Lachlan River. Uh, but our young people, and they often, the stories often make uh, the headlines, in particular the things that, like the, the Royal Leicester Show last year in Sydney, and, and certainly those things are front and centre, not just for the show community, but all communities where our young people require, it takes a village. It's not a policing problem. We often see the consequence of those behaviours as a policing problem, but it can only be solved by all of us coming together and coming to the table to work through the solutions. Young people like adults need a purpose. They need to keep, keep busy, they go to school, be educated, all of those things, so they're not roaming our streets at night and committing crime. And if we don't take care of our young people today, then I'm not sure what we're looking at tomorrow. And certainly with our indigenous populations right across New South Wales and the, um, the incidence of crime, unfortunately as perpetrators, but also as victims of crime, it is much higher representation than, it, than the population themselves. So it's something we must tackle, we must talk about, but we must work in partnership. The fourth priority is, is organised crime, and unfortunately it's the one that makes the front, front page of the, tip, the um, papers, 
but it's really a small percentage of what happens on our streets. Unfortunately, it does draw the attention, but certainly we've got many, many resources tackling organised crime in this state. It is a crime type that requires us to work globally. It's a global problem, it's a national problem, it's not just a Sydney problem. And it's one that we have to work in partnership with our law, and our law enforcement partners and other partners um, to, to battle this scourge that plays out on our streets. What spills across our borders, whether it's by sea or, or across the land borders, is played out on our streets, unfortunately. And the fifth priority, and Darren talked about it uh, in the intro, thank you, was, uh, is really my connected workforce. 22,000 officers right across this state from, I think I've got about five generations in my workforce. We're a 190 year police force and I say we've got five generations living in a 190 year old house. So it's getting tight and it's, and it's getting interesting as we work through working with different generations in a workforce. From those that joined the police like I did that wanted to stay in the police for their whole career to now, I think we're Gen Z, I don't know what my sons are, but they don't want to join the police forever. They want a career, whether it's five years, 10 years or something else, and they want to move on to something else. My challenge is about the attraction and retention of people knowing that they only want to stay a short period of time, but I've got you know, perennial problems. But I need to match my recruitment. I think I need a paradigm shift to make sure that my recruitment proposition and my value proposition matches theirs, rather than me expecting that their value proposition will match mine. Which goes to, I guess, those things that underpin all of those actions that we need to take to keep our streets safe and the community safe, and it's about the values of the New South Wales Police Force and the members of the New South Wales Police Force, both sworn and sworn. I say repeatedly to my, my staff that if your personal values are no longer aligned to the organisational values, then perhaps it's time to find another job. But importantly, our values are about respect, and that's respect for each other and respect for our communities and the members of their communities, no matter what community. Pride, and that's about pride in their work, pride in how they present for work and pride in how they attend their work, that they treat every job, every person as a person, not just a number. And trust. It's important, of course, that you as a community trust the police. So that is an important intrinsic value in who we are, that we trust each other and the community trusts us. And I'll be doing a lot of work in the organisation this year in particular, and I hope it goes on forever, just to remind officers about that value proposition, that trust proposition, that piece that says, I joined the New South Wales Police Force to serve with pride, to service the community of New South Wales, and I take pride in what I do. So that's the New South Wales Police Force in a quick flyover. Um, I could talk for hours about the, all the challenges and the great things that individual commands do. And I'm sure you, from wherever you've come from, if you're from New South Wales, you have your own interactions and hopefully own partnerships with officers at the ground, at the grassroots level, whether that's by um, just community engagement or whether that's problem solving a particular problem, whether it's a youth action meeting, whether it's a safety action meeting or a... Um, community safety precinct meeting or a principals forum, there are various forums that police officers take a lead partnership role with the community to tackle whatever that issue is in that community. Because we know that no two communities are the same. And we know that police officers through their leadership and the officers within that command need to understand their community and respond to those needs according to that community. So I'm looking forward to the next four years. The first year has um, gone, by, gone by very quickly um, and there's still much to be done, but I can only do it, and I enjoy doing it, and I love what I do, 
because I have got great people working for me and I'm proud to lead them and I'm proud to represent them as their commissioner and commissioner of New South Wales Police. Thank you. Thank you.